Hi, I'm Dennis. And I'm Liz. Welcome to ETRV, and today we're going to be giving you a tour of our newly renovated Class C RV. If you're new to this channel, we started full-time RVing in a Grand Design Momentum fifth wheel toy hauler back in 2017. We traveled all across the US, but realized that a fifth wheel toy hauler at 36 feet was just too much for us. We wanted to downsize, so we ended up finding a used Class C RV that we would fully renovate. So for the past six months, we have been working extremely hard doing tons of upgrades, customization, and improvements to the RV. With a lot of help from friends and a lot of elbow grease, we were able to pull off a beautiful RV that we cannot wait to show you. So let's get started showing you our 2010 Fleetwood Pulse 24S. I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of everything that the 2010 Pulse comes with stock, plus a few of the exterior upgrades that we've done up until this point. Our 2010 Pulse is powered by the second generation Sprinter chassis, which gives you a 3.0 liter diesel motor with 26 gallons worth of fuel capacity, and we've been averaging around 15 miles per gallon. It's got 29 gallons worth of fresh water storage capacity, plus 33 gallons a piece of black and gray water storage tank capacities. It's got 24 gallons of propane storage capacity, which is a nice amount considering it has a 3600 RPM Cummins Onan propane generator, as well as a gas electric fridge and a propane powered stovetop. This particular Pulse comes with a full wall slide as you can see behind me. If you've watched our Class C purchase journey, you would know that we did not want a slide at all until we took a tour of our Buds, the New State Nomads, Winnebago 24D, and we fell in love with how much space the full wall slide gives you on the Sprinter based RV. And you'll see inside this thing is huge. For the suspension, we've installed Agile Off-Road revalved Fox Off-Road shocks and we've put Bilstein heavy duty struts up front. And that made a huge difference when it came to the rocking and rolling that these tall and wide Sprinter chassis class C's experience. Another thing that attracted us to the 24S is that the entry door is more towards the rear of the van. And the biggest thing that that does for this particular model is it gives it a true pass through bay with identical giant basement based storages on both sides of the coach. Now on the roof, we've got 360 watts of Ames power flexible solar panels. Plus I Frankensteined our old wine guard bat wing antenna hoist to hold our high boost omnidirectional antenna. And we installed an automatic max van to keep the kitty cats safe and cool while we might be away from the RV. Like Liz mentioned, we downsized from a 36 foot fifth wheel toy hauler and we carried around a Honda Goldwing F6B with us the first two years we were on the road. Having a two wheel vehicle of some sort is one of my must have items while we're traveling. Also, being that we've already done trailer life, we did not want to tow anything behind our new Class C. We wanted to keep the, the overall length and footprint as small as possible. That way we would have the mobility that we did not have while we were in the fifth wheel. So that's why we ultimately ended up going with a Class C that was on a Mercedes-Benz chassis. Most of the Mercedes chassis are gonna give you up to 500 pounds worth of tongue weight capacity, which is more than enough to accommodate the Yamaha X-Max and the Moto Tow motorcycle carrier that we so beautifully have it hanging off of the rear end of the Class C. So now that you've seen the majority of everything we've done to the outside of the 24S, let's see what magic we've done to the inside. Here we go. Welcome to our home. This is the interior of our Class C RV and we have worked so hard to make her our dream come true. We'll start in the kitchen since that's the first place you see pretty much when you walk into the RV. We custom painted the cabinets. We ended up going with this like bright coral color because we really wanted to have like a tropical tiki vibe in here and we wanted something that was funky and different. So we ended up using Dash of Curry. We just bought the paint from Home Depot and we ended up just painting the lower bottom cabinets instead of everything because we didn't want it to be too overwhelming. We kept the original countertops and we have our original two burner propane 
range as well. So we added backsplash, which is just peel and stick backsplash that I think adds and ties everything together so wonderfully. We did get custom blinds um, from Home Depot that are blackout curtains, which are really nice since technically our bedroom is in the living space. We wanted to make sure that it got as dark as possible when we're sleeping. This is a microwave convection. We don't use it too often. Ultimately, we may take this out and build another cabinet, but for the time being, it works perfectly. We also changed out the sink. This is an Ikea faucet and Ikea sink. We didn't like that the original one actually had the faucet built in, and it really just wasn't that much space to wash dishes. So we upgraded and installed our own sink, and we think everything in the kitchen turned out perfectly. So stock it came with an absorption style Dometic fridge, which is a separated fridge freezer, which is key for us since we're full time and we keep a lot of stuff in the freezer. And this freezer is huge and it's packed right now. We did do upgrades. I added an exhaust vent fan. So that actually pulls the hot air away from the coils on the back of the fridge to help the unit cool a lot better than it would if we were just letting the heat escape naturally. We also added fridge vent circulation fans inside which take the cold condensation and push the air and keep it moving throughout the inside of the fridge so that way there's no hot spots and it keeps the fridge running as efficiently as it ever possibly could. The couch area is one of my favorite parts. We ended up removing the big bulky sleeper sofa. It just was not our style at all. So we took that out and we ended up finding a couch from Ikea. It's supposed to be an outdoor patio area couch, but it ended up working perfectly for our space since we wanted to go with more of the tropical tiki rattan vibe. We got custom cushions made and we chose a really fun, tropical, bold pattern that we think pops perfectly with the coral on our kitchen cabinets and just ties the entire space together. But not only is it comfortable in kind of our lounging area, we can lay down on it fully, but it also has storage. So underneath each of the cushions, we keep all of our extra clothes and blankets or other items that we would need. So function and beauty perfect when you live in a small space. In addition to having storage under the couch and of course in the kitchen area, we also have overhead cabinets which end up storing a lot. We keep all of our kitchen stuff on the left two sides and over here we kind of have like a surplus cabinet with more of our stuff to the right. But overall there really is a decent amount of storage. When you go smaller you really want to take that into consideration and we're actually happy with the amount of space that we've added and that was here to begin with. Speaking of extra storage space, let's show you our pantry addition and customization. Originally, the cabinet space ended here, so it still gave you a dedicated space for a pantry. It just wasn't very usable or very large. And since we love cooking, having more space to store our kitchen gadgets and our food was a must. So what we first did was create a new door and we cut into where the entry was of the original cabinet. It used to jut out to about here, making this a really unusable, narrow, skinny space. So we widened that so that we could have more access and more storage space inside, in addition to adding a whole extra cabinet. So we cut into the upper cabinet that used to extend all the way to here and we ended up customizing our own pantry space. We keep extra kitchen gadgets, food, and our technology and hiking bags in here. It ended up working out extremely well giving us the very much needed extra storage space. And below the pantry extension is where we store our 2000 watt Pure Sign Ames power inverter and our 200 amp hour next gen lithium batteries. The inverter needs to be ventilated to have airflow, so we had our friends custom design this wood piece so that it not only let air in and out, but also looked really unique and cool. And we used marine poles to have hatch access just in case we need to get to the batteries to surface them. And since this is not just our home, it's also our home for our kitty cats, we wanted to make this space feel really comfortable, cozy, and cat friendly. We ended up adding a rug that is made from recycled plastic bottles and we found this really cool cat ottoman that Pilar loves to sleep in. I'm pretty sure she's currently in there. Anytime we're moving, she either sleep, sleeps on top or sleeps inside and it also serves as a footstool for us if we want. The bed was our biggest compromise by far. We originally wanted a Murphy bed because we loved that you still had really usable living space and your bed was a dedicated area that just tucked away each night. 
but we ended up choosing this floor plan just because we could make the custom desk and TV area and we felt it suited our needs more. So the compromise came with where we sleep. We ended up upgrading to a custom mattress from Plush Beds and we are using Betty sheets to make making the bed a much easier process each day. We keep the ladder on top of the bed anytime we're moving and whenever we're ready for bed, we pretty much just lock the ladder in and climb up. <sighs> Dennis sleeps on the outside and I sleep on the inside and yes, it is tight. Pretty much all you do is come up here to sleep because there's really not that much space. We'd rather have much larger living space, which we really do get having the full wall slide. It's so spacious in here and functional versus having a dedicated large bedroom space. We have lots of storage and we have a place to rest our head that's super comfortable. Since we both work from the RV, it was really important for us to have a dedicated workspace. I need an office with things like a printer and files and places to store envelopes or checks and pens. And when we bought this RV, it actually did have a fold out desk with two really big bulky chairs that just had to go. We decided to convert this space into a full sit in desk eating and TV area. So this not only works as our office or breakfast nook, but it also serves as our entertainment space. So we ended up installing an automatic TV lift so that when we're ready to watch TV and relax for the evening, all we have to do is push a button and it rises up and we don't have to have the TV visible 24 seven. It also doesn't take up as much space, giving us more usable eating or working space. And while we're enjoying TV, we weren't exactly happy with the original entertainment system that came with the coach. It was 10 years old. So we decided to install a sound bar and a wireless subwoofer. Our friend who helped us with our cabinet extension and desk build also helped us create this custom decor piece. Before they had these awkward X decorative pieces and we ended up having him cut us like a palm frond or a palm leaf that would go here and we stained them to match the rest of the RV. I really think it's just a small little touch that ties the space together. I absolutely love that feature. A lot of the art pieces that you see hanging here are actually either custom designs by friends that we knew, like this piece from Orlando, or they are Dennis's artwork. He's a very talented artist and we have a lot of his pieces hanging around the space, which is a really nice personal touch that makes this place feel like home. Up is the bathroom. It's by far the smallest space in here, but it is also very usable. So in the bathroom, we have our closet, which we've added a shoe rack and we have all of our hanging clothes as well as some shoes in the bottom. This for right now is our hamper. We pretty much just pull it out, keep all of our laundry there. We eventually want to upgrade to having a composting toilet, but right now it just, we didn't have enough time and it wasn't in our budget. So we have the original toilet, not our favorite. We want to get rid of it ASAP, but it works. We kept the sink pretty much stock, the shower. All we really did was add a shower curtain and a nice rug to pull it all together. And of course we painted the interior white. One upgrade we did do in the bathroom was changing out the shower head to an oxygenic shower head. It helps conserve water and increase water pressure when the water is going. So far, we love it. The RV came stock with a towel holder on the back of the door, which is really nice. It allows us to each have our own spot for a towel and washcloth, and we have extras underneath the sink. It's not a ton of space for under sink and in cabinet storage, but it's sufficient. We absolutely love our RV. We are so happy with how it turned out. We'd love to hear what you liked about the renovation in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure to click the subscribe button and ring the bell next to it because we're going to be sharing all of our adventures we have on this beautiful class CRV. We are actually embarking on a six month trip to Mexico where we're going to be going all over the country with two of our friends. It's going to be a really great time and we're so excited to finally be back on the road living in our perfect home.